In this lecture, we are going to learn what is a DOM event and how to handle DOM events in JavaScript. Always remember that JavaScript is an event-driven programming language. That simply means that in JavaScript, we mostly write programs which responds to an event. The event can happen on a web page element like click of a button or when a text box is focused, etc. The events which happens on web page elements are called as DOM events. Then an event can also happen on a browser. For example, scrolling up or down in a web page using browser scroll bar or maximizing or minimizing browser window. These are events which are specific to browser. Similarly, an event can also happen on keyboard. For example, when a key is pressed on the keyboard, the key press event happens. And similarly, we can also have mouse events like mouse enter, mouse out, mouse click, etc. In this lecture, we are mainly going to focus on DOM events and we will talk about browser events, keyboard events, etc. later in this course. So here, in this web page, when this button will be clicked, a click event will happen on this button element. In the same way, if we scroll down or if we scroll up, in that case, this scrolling up or down, it is browser specific event. It is not happening on the web page. Every event which happens on the web page, for example, if I hover over this H2 element, this is a web page event. This is a DOM event because this event is happening on a DOM element. Here, I'm hovering over a DOM element, an H2 element. So the event is happening on the DOM element. But when we scroll up or down in the browser, that is browser event. When we maximize or minimize this browser, that is browser specific event. Okay, in the same way, when a text box is focused, the focus event happens on that text box. Alright, so when an event happens on a DOM element, we can write and execute some JavaScript code when that event happens. And that is called as event handling. So when an event happens, we can write and execute some JavaScript code. In that way, by executing that JavaScript code, we are handling that event. We are doing something. We are responding to an event. And that is called as event handling. As I mentioned, JavaScript is event driven programming language. We mostly write JavaScript code to respond to an event. For that, there are three main things which you need to know about. First, you need to know about events. Event is something which happens on a DOM element or on the browser. So for example, when a button is clicked, the click event has happened on the button element. Then we have event listener. This event listener will be responsible for listening to any event which happens on a DOM element. For example, on the button element, if the click event has happened, the listener will be responsible for listening the click event on that button element. And then we have event handler. Event handler is the JavaScript logic or a function which gets executed whenever a specific event happens. For example, button is the DOM element. On that button, when a click event will happen, the event listener will be listening to that click event. And when that click event happens, it will notify the event handler and the event handler code will be executed. We will understand this with a practical example in a bit. Now, there are three ways in which we can handle events in JavaScript. The first way is by using inline event handlers. Second, we can also use event handler properties to handle an event. And then we also have a method called add event listener method which will be listening for an event. And when that event happens, it executes some code. So using add event listener method also, we can handle events. In this lecture, we are going to talk about inline event handler. And in the next lectures, we will talk about event handler properties for handling events. And we will also talk about add event listener method for handling the event. Now, in order to use inline event handling, what we need to do is, we need to add an attribute to the HTML element on which we want to listen to an event. And the attribute name must be the event name prefixed with on. So for example, let's say we have a button element on which we want to listen to click event. So on that button element, we will add an attribute and the attribute name will be the event name prefixed with on. 
so the attribute name will be on click and then to that attribute we can assign a javascript expression which we want to execute when that event happens on that dom element let's try to understand this with an example so here in the web page we have these three tabs home emi calculator and apply for loan and in the last lecture we created this function render selected section and what this function does is based on the value of the selected tab it is either going to render the home section or emi calculator section or apply for loan section so based on the value of this selected tab currently it is home page that's why you will see that here only the home section has been rendered the emi calculator section and apply for loan section has not been rendered now what i want is i want to make these tabs work so when the home tab is clicked we want to display the home page when the emi calculator tab is clicked we want to display the emi calculator page and when this apply for loan tab is clicked we want to display the apply for loan page so here we want to handle click event whenever any one of these tabs are clicked based on that we want to render a specific content for that we are going to use inline event handler so we are displaying these three tabs in the html using these three divs okay so whenever any one of this div is clicked we want to render a specific content so on these three divs we are going to handle click event and we are going to do that using inline event handler so in case of inline event handler what we do is we create an attribute and the attribute name should be the event name which we want to handle prefixed with on so on this div element we want to handle click event so the attribute name should be on click event name prefixed with on so the attribute name will be on click and to this within these double quotes we can specify any javascript expression which we want to execute and i want to handle the click event on these three divs so i'm also going to add this on click attribute on other two divs as well okay now what do we want to do when any one of this div is clicked well what we want is whenever any one of these three divs is clicked that means any one of these three tabs is clicked we want to call this render selected section function so i'm going to call this function here whenever the click event happens on this div same thing i'm going to do for this div also so whenever the click event happens on the second div at that time also we want to call this render selected section function and for the third div also whenever this div is clicked we want to call this render selected section function now when we are calling this render selected section function when the click event happens on this div or this div or this div we also need to pass the value for this selected tab so currently what we will do is we don't need this selected tab variable here so i'm going to comment it and for now i'm also going to comment this call we want to call this function whenever any one of these three tabs is clicked and not directly okay so that's why i have commented it here let me save the changes and now you will notice that since we have commented this if i scroll down you can see all the three pages displayed here but we will fix that in a bit now when we are calling this function from here there we also need to pass the value for selected tab so when the home tab is clicked we want to render the content of home section for that inside this function we have written the switch statement and when the content of home section will be clicked when the value of this selected tab is home page right so here i'm going to copy this string value and when we are calling this render selected section function for this first div for this home tab at that time we are going to pass the value for selected tab as home page then when this emi calculator tab is clicked at that time when we are calling this render selected section function there for this selected tab we need to pass this string value emi calculator page then only it is going to render the content of emi calculator section so here 
again let's pass a string value for the selected tab which should be emi calculator page and similarly for this apply for loan page we need to pass this value apply for loan page so let's pass it here with this let's save the changes and let's see if the implementation works so currently when i load the page for the first time it is displaying all the three sections now let me fix this as well so what we will do is initially when the page loads for the first time that time i only want to display the content of home page and not the content of emi calculator and apply for loan so i'm going to call this render selected section function explicitly here and at that time i'm going to pass the value for selected tab as home page so in that case when this web page will be rendered in the browser and when this javascript code will run at that time this selected tab it will be home page so it will only render the content of home page if i save the changes now you will notice that it is only rendering the content of home page now when i click on this home tab again it is rendering the content of home page as it should be but as soon as i click on this emi calculator you will see it is rendering nothing and when i click on this apply for loan it is rendering nothing and now if i click on this home page again it is rendering nothing that's because let me reload the page so when the page is loaded for the first time we are calling this render selected section function so what it will do is it will read the home page section and it will assign it to this home content variable it will read the emi calculator section so this second section this section and it will store it in this emi calc content variable and it will also load the apply for loan section and it will store it inside this loan content variable and after that we are setting the content of this container div basically this div to empty string that means all these sections will be removed from the dom right so inside this div there is no more sections it is empty because we have set the inner content of that div to empty string okay so for the first call we have all those sections in these variables so now the value of this selected tab is home page so based on that it is going to render the content stored in this home content so that is correct and that's why we are able to see this home page when this page loads for the first time in the browser but now when i click on any one of these tabs remember that from this div this container div all these sections are already removed from this line okay we stored it in these variables but since these variables are created inside this render selected section function when this function will be called for the first time these variables will be created and it will be assigned with those sections but when we are going to click on any one of these tabs this function will be called again because to this click event we are assigning that function so that function will be called every time any one of these tabs will be clicked and when that function will be called it is again going to create these variables and it will try to read the home page section the ami calculator section and apply for loan section and store it in these variables but earlier when this function was called at that time we already set this inner html of this div to empty string so these sections are no more there in the dom keep this point in mind in the html page we have these sections but at this line when we set it to empty string these sections are removed from the dom they are not available in the dom anymore because at this line we set it to empty string so now when we are trying to read those sections and store it in these variables since those sections are not present in the dom it is going to return us null so now this home content this emi calc content and this loan content it is going to store null and that's why when we are clicking on any one of these tabs at that time it is not displaying anything because this selected tab here even though it is going to have some values so for example if i click on this emi calculator 
the selected tab will be EMI calculator. And in that case, when we are trying to select the outer HTML on this EMI calc content, since it is null because there is no section available in the DOM with this class name, this EMI calc content dot outer HTML is going to return. It is going to throw an error. And that's what you will see here. Cannot read property of null because here we are trying to read the outer HTML on the null value. That's why we have this error. So I hope you got the point. What is the problem here? Now, how can we resolve this problem? That is very easy. All we have to do is we have to write this content outside of this function so that when this JavaScript code will be executed for the first time, at that time only, we are going to read all the three sections and we are going to store it in these variables. So now every time these tabs will be clicked, it is going to call this function, but it is not going to recreate these variables. Right, these variables will be created only once and it is going to store each section. It is going to store the home page section, the EMI calculator section and apply for loan section. So this code will be executed only once. And since these are global variables, since we are not writing it inside this function, these variables are not going to be created every time this function will be called. And in this way, if we save the changes now, so initially the home page is being displayed because when this JavaScript code will run for the first time, that time we are calling this render selected section function and we are passing the selected tab as home page. So that's why initially when this page loads, it is displaying the home page. But now when I go to EMI calculator page, a click event has happened on this div, on this tab. So this render selected section function has been called. This selected tab will be EMI calculator page. And in that case, the EMI calc content, so the section which we are storing in this variable, that will be rendered here. Similarly, if I go to apply for loan tab, there it is going to render the section of apply for loan. If I go to home tab, it is going to render the section of home tab. Okay, so now it is working as expected. So here we are handling click event on these divs using this inline event handler. So here the event is the click event. We are listening to that event using inline event handler. And when that click event will happen, we are executing this function. So in this case, this function is the event handler. This function is getting called every time the click event is happening. Okay, so the event is click event. This is the event handler. And we are listening to this click event using on click attribute. So here, this on click will be the event listener. So this is all from this lecture. In this lecture, we learned how we can handle an event using inline event handler. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.